it's time to prepare for the NFL Draft. The 2023 Draft is just a couple weeks away, and it got me thinking that the last time I was involved in the draft when I was an employee of the Chicago Bears was 10 years ago. And I started going back through, and I found this photo showing my setup. I had my computer, my laptop, the thickest laptop you probably have ever seen because I needed the GPU power. It's not the same as it is today. GPU power back then in order to do some live streaming. And I have my monitor. I have my camera set up on a tripod right next to my computer because I was in charge of live streaming. I was also in charge of editing a highlight reel for the website of the player that we drafted. So right as we made the selection, I had to jump in and start editing and I had a graphic set up and it was such a manual process to generate that graphic that I wish we had the tools that we have today in order to simplify this process because at the end of the day, our goal is to turn content around as quickly as possible for the fans. So I thought this was a good opportunity to jump in and show you three different ways that we can set up a project ahead of the draft that's gonna save us time and energy on draft day so that we can focus on creating more content for our team. The first way is gonna be the most manual way. So if you fought along with the Sports for Social series that I created, you're gonna feel like this is pretty familiar. Now those first two ways are dependent on you having access to After Effects and manually updating the assets as they come in. You can also export both of these as Mogert. So if you're working hand in hand with an editor, you can do this up front and they'll be able to edit and update the graphics to fit within their edit as the draft goes along. Now, if you're looking to update and offload this project to somebody to free up the motion designer's bandwidth on draft day, this third way is probably going to be the best way to do this. The quick updates that you're able to make through a spreadsheet make this an ideal scenario for something like the draft when there's so many different variables that flex and change at a moment's notice and having the ability to make those updates quickly and keep moving with your draft without throwing you off is going to be key. Let's jump in and check out the three different ways that we can approach this. So we're in this project and this is very similar to what I shared in the Sports for Social series. So I'm not gonna dwell in, in this project for too long uh, because it should look fairly familiar if you've gone through that series. Generally speaking, we have a team name, player name, and we get into the draft, and we have a wipe that shows the logo, the team name, which also is in the background, and then we reveal the player information that we want to land on and stick on for a short bit because that's what people want to see. So I've set everything up in my essential graphics panel, and this is helpful, especially if you're exporting this as a Mogert to be edited within Premiere. We have our color, which is tied to the background here and the background back here. Let me undo. We have the secondary color, which is basically our highlight. And then our accent color is going to be the text elements and some transitional wipe elements. And obviously it looked much better with white. So, but at least you can see where things are being updated and changed there. So if I, let me get to, let's just start here. If I change the team name, Let's just go with the second in line here. Houston, it's gonna update there. And if I change this to Texans, great. So that works there. So we have player name, which comes in here and over here. So I can update this. Let's say we're gonna go with Levis, and I have I have this clamp like I showed you in a different tutorial here as well. So if this was a super long last name, it's going to clamp at this point. All right, so Will Levis. Why not, actually, let's do a different one. Let's go Bijan Robinson. Let me 
make sure this is all caps. And he's a running back, so we can change that. And that's updating there from Texas. And this is also clamped here if we go super long. That's my tried and true way of testing how, uh, how my width is working. Just smash the keyboard. And then we have our round. So let's just put a different number in there just to make sure that works. And 18, let's say 156. Cool. So that all is working. And then for the three images that we can change out, we want to change out the logo, player cutout, or player image. You can right click, right click and replace, but since I'm in After Effects, I think easiest and quickest is to click into each one of these comps, just leave them active here across the top. So if I have Richardson selected, let's go with Robinson. I'm gonna make sure this one's selected down here. I'm gonna click up here and select the one that I wanna change out. Hold Alt or Option and click and drag and drop and it'll replace. Player cutout, same thing. Select this one down here and Robinson. Alter option, click and drag and hold and release. And then team logo, we wanna go with Texan. So alt, click and drag, and that's replaced. So now if I go back and I click somewhere over here. All right, and this logo might be a little low, but um, I'm not gonna mess around with that. So generally speaking, we have all these updates that were made. And if I select this frame right here so I can update the colors, we're gonna go with red as the secondary color and this darker blue as the primary color. I'm leaving the accent color as the stroked color. So now we have completed this asset. And it'd be a shame if he <laughs> didn't go until 156. He's Definitely a top-notch player in this draft. So let's update that. So you can quickly update right within here. The only downside is you also have to have After Effects or if you export this as a Mogurt, you can send this to Premiere and update everything that we have in this window. You can update within Premiere. So if you have an editor that you're sending this off to, that would be a good scenario in which you could do this, especially if you're just working with one team. All right, let's talk about another way that we can do this. So I have taken what we had with the NFL draft. When we put everything up into this essential graphics panel, it can actually be treated more as a conduit to another comp. So that's exactly what I've done here. I've elevated all the assets necessary up into the essential graphics panel for the NFL draft, all of these assets that we had before. And now... When I go into my drop downs, if I select one of these comps, if I twirl down to central graphics properties, you're going to see all the different assets that we had put up in the NFL draft contained here. And the only things that I I removed are the are the images because I'm I'm just going to change those out manually anyway. So the benefit of doing this is that. I can get rid of some of the tedium, some of the manual labor that goes into updating these colors. And I have created all of these assets except for one, and that is the Philadelphia Eagles. So if I go back up into my NFL draft dropdowns and I select Philadelphia Eagles, I get nothing over here. So let's go ahead and create that. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to hold Control and hit the left bracket to move it down one. So we can rename this. So hit Enter to rename, and I'm going to call this Philadelphia Eagles. And when we twirl open our essential properties, we can go in and change everything here. So if I right-click, Edit Value, we can change this to say Philadelphia. And let's get to a point where we can see, there we go. So that updated. Right click, edit value, Eagles. 
right. Cool, so that's updated. And the rest of this is driven driven by the dropdowns that I have at the top of my comp up here in this controller and can be driven from this essential graphics panel. So the only other things that we need to add here are the colors. So let's go in and add those. So that's the green. This one was A5ACAF. Is there gray? And I'm just going to leave the accent color as the white. All right, so we have Philadelphia with their logo and all the information here for this player. Now, you might ask, well, what's the point in doing this? This is still semi manual, but the advantage to doing this this way is that everything has originated from one single comp. So if I go into this Chicago Bears comp, and let's say that this logo, this logo is still the Eagles logo because I have it selected up here. So if I want this to be positioned differently, if I go into my comp here, team logo, if I hit position, and let's say I wanted that to be a little bit higher in the comp. If I update that, and now if I go back to my dropdowns, no matter which team I select, that logo has been updated. So I am starting with one single comp that is driving all of this. So although I can make some updates within this one uh, dropdown master comp, when I go in and edit one of them, there's a ripple effect through the rest because it's all originated from one single, it's all looking at the one single comp that I initially created. So there's some major advantages to this, even though there's still somewhat of a manual process here. So I'd still go in and let me just close that, change out the cutout, let's say Wilson. So I'm gonna hold the alter option and drop and click like we did last time. And same with his image. Oops, I didn't select that first. Alt, drag and drop. All right. So we need to update his name to be Tyree. And you're going to see the name jump a little bit when I click off here. Because it's a little bit, it's a shorter name, so it's going to fill that space a little bit better. And... He went to Texas Tech and is a defensive end. Since this didn't update here, it's because my NFL draft drop downs, I'm in my player stats where I changed out the logo. So if I go back to my drop downs here, you're going to see everything update here and we're good to go. So defensive end, Texas Tech. And I just need to update the round. Let's just pick a different number just so that we can see that this is all working. And great. And we'll just push this, put this back because he's a top pick. Great. So we can see that all of this is working and we can change everything else out dynamically. You can see the logos are getting changed the colors are changing so this is a great option if you want to change up the look and feel with a couple different comps without updating across the board now this is the way that i updated and have used colors before so even if you work for one team you can change the colors doing using this way so you can duplicate the chicago bears three times maybe you want navy to be the accent color one time and the orange to be the primary color you can you can do that and change so you just you just have a couple different options in here and not the full gamut okay, so now we're going to talk about how you can do this from a spreadsheet i have the same graphics package and i've gone through and applied all the templator settings because i'm going to use templator 3 which i have docked over here in this panel to be able to take the data from my spreadsheet and apply it to my graphics package so that I can render it. 
Now, there's some major upsides to doing this. Time is a big one, but also flexibility. And that's why something for something like the NFL draft, this would be a great opportunity to explore. So now that I have my data all pulled up here, let me give you a quick glimpse into how I built this. So I created a database of all the team colors so we don't have to manually enter those. And my spreadsheet here is going to pull from the team name and look in this sheet and look for the team name and then find the corresponding colors and pull from there. And same thing with the players. So the player's name, their position, and school are all going to be automatically pulled directly from their name. So I have been able to simplify this down to allow this to be as easy as possible, especially if we're handing this off and it's not the motion designer that is handling the export of, of these assets. And this is really the power of using a spreadsheet like this. So let's go ahead and make some updates to our data set here and see it populate. So if I'm going to change this to the bears, I just reload here and you can see the team name changed in the background all the player information updated and the round and the pick stayed the same uh because i didn't change that and the logo changed here so what happens if we update to a different player and let's change the round to 2 and 15 and reload this again everything's updated all right so this is great if you want to lay out, say we wanted to lay out how everything was going to go. So we'd have Carolina in first. Let's say they pick Bryce Young. Houston Texans are going to select C.J. Stroud. The Colts are going to move up to third, sure. Um, and they're going to select Anthony Richardson. The Bears are going to jump back up into fourth for Bijan Robinson. Then we have the Detroit Lions selecting Dalton Kincaid. Arizona Cardinals traded back, and they're going to get their offensive tackle. Let's see, Atlanta Falcons are going to go for a wide receiver for help for Desmond Ritter. Raiders get their quarterback in Levis, and then oh, and then I need to change this to Philadelphia, and they go get some cornerback help. All right, so then we need to update these so that they all go in order. So it's going to be pick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so now when we click through, let me minimize this. When we click through our order here, and we're currently previewing row two, which is the first row here. So if I refresh my data, we have Bryce Young for the Carolina Panthers. And we see his name update there. All right, and as we go, you can look at this row here. It says row two. As I hit forward, you're going to see round one pick two for CJ Stroud. And so on and so forth. Everything is updating and going along here. Great. And so th that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of it. I mean, you can quickly update and change as things come in on the fly. And let's say you don't have a cutout for a specific player that gets drafted. Well, all you have to do after you do your cutout is just make sure that that cutout lands and that image lands within this specified footage folder. So once you drop that footage in that folder, the way that we have this set up, you're going to be able to quickly read the player's name and it'll pop up and you'll be able to quickly export that asset. Now, I, I walked you through the changing assets here, but let's see how quick this goes when we go to render. So 
in order to have the setup, if you watch the previous tutorials that I've done here, and I'll link those below, you know that within the render status, we need to set this to ready and we need to enable the bot. So once I enable this bot, it's going to take a second. All the ones that already say done will not render. So let me quickly just change these to ready. And see how long this takes for everything to kick in. Once it kicks in, it will pick up these assets and turn them around in really quick fashion. So now it says queued, processing. All right, so now we have all of these assets over here and everything went through. So I enabled the bot after we had already filled out some of the spreadsheet. So now that the bot's enabled, let's select, make another selection and see how quickly it kicks in because that way you can see how quick things go on the fly like you would in a draft. So let's select Seattle Seahawks and they're going to select... Tyree Wilson in the first round, 10th pick, and we just need to set this to say ready. And once we do that, we'll give it a second, and the bot will kick in after reading ready and making sure you click off of it. There's queued processing, and here it goes. Pulling the footage from our footage folder and reading from the Google Sheet. So we have that asset exported. <laughs> 